Now, one thing that I have uh, spoken about before uh, in my uh, Afghanistan withdrawal video is the fact that anyone that assisted the British and American forces in any way, even if they were just an interpreter, the Taliban is going door to door, dragging them outside and just executing them, right? And uh, apparently, interpreters were also having their tongues cut out, you know? Lovely, great stuff from the deeply human rights respecting uh, Taliban. Uh, one other thing that I got really annoyed at is there were interpreters who were promised, promised to be brought back to America or Britain, where, uh, you know, upon the end of the occupation of Afghanistan, once their services were no longer needed. They had this in writing, this was agreed with them, which is fine, that's fine. You help us, we help you, an exchange. However, uh, apparently in the American Embassy, uh, for those that don't know, embassies have furnaces in the basement where you basically take all of the uh, paper records and throw them into should an evacuation be necessary. However, it turned out that uh, when they were burning all of these documents and files and folders and stuff like that, they also threw into the furnace the passports for all of these Afghan interpreters and employees that worked with the Americans. So they were fucked. But it gets even worse because now we can look at this article today. Afghanistan, the Defence Secretary is angled over data breach. Wow, I wonder what type of data breach this might be. Hopefully it doesn't, re hopefully it doesn't result in more Afghans uh, being murdered for helping us. Hopefully not. Uh, Defence Secretary Ben Wallace has said that it would be an understatement to say that he was angered by a data breach involving the email addresses of dozens of Afghan interpreters who worked for UK forces. Bravo! Bravo! Well done! Fantastic! More than 250 people seeking relocation to the UK, many of whom are in hiding because the Taliban are going to fucking murder them for helping us, were mistakenly copied into an email. You know, you know when you accidentally, oh damn, I only meant to reply to one and I replied to all instead. You know, you know that little, that little hiccup. You know, except, you know, most of those, you know, in the past, they just involve a little bit of embarrassment because, you know, you were bitching about Stacey being a complete fucking bitch and you accidentally copied her in the email. Except in this case, it's going to result in people fucking dying. Yeah, super fantastic. Uh, Mr. Wallace has apologised to them. Yeah, I hope I hope your apology can stop AK rounds uh, and launch an investigation. One person has been suspended, he said. Yeah, suspended. I mean, just might have caused the deaths of 250 people, but he's been suspended. Uh, the MOD has also referred this and referred itself to the Information Commissioner's Office. Speaking in the Commons, Mr Wallace said, I apologise to those Afghans affected by this data breach and with home, the Home Office, we are now working with them to provide security advice. <laughs> advice. Oh, they're coming for you. Here's some advice. Oh, well, you don't have any boots on the ground in the country anymore, you know, at least that we know of. It is an unacceptable level of service that has let down the thousands of members of the armed forces and veterans. On behalf of the Ministry of Defence, I apologise. I apologise. Yeah, sure. Cool, man. He added that Armed Forces Minister James Hepe was in the region speaking to neighbouring states to see what more could be done. The email was sent to interpreters who remain in Afghanistan or have been able to get to other countries. If their families are still back in Afghanistan, then trust me, the Taliban will go for them. Their email addresses could be seen by all recipients showing people's names and some associated profile pictures. Fantastic. So you can go, you can't even go, oh no, 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 it's, it's the other, it's the, it's the other um, Aman Hussein, uh, the, the one that lives three streets down. Nope, they've got pictures. Great. That's fucking super. Uh, the Information Commissioner, uh, which has the power to issue enforcement notices and fines in the most serious cases, is already making inquiries with the MOD. A spokesperson for the watchdog said people rightly expected their personal information to be handled securely, especially when it's lost, could have devastating consequences, including possible threat to life. Yeah, this isn't just a 
little case of some of your passwords and emails get leaked and someone may get access to your RuneScape account or, you know, you may get a little bit of, you know, identity theft or something. Nah, you're going to get dragged out of your house and shot in the back of the fucking head. Yeah, seems a little bit more severe than, you know, the usual risks. Uh, Conservative MP Tobias Elwood, who chairs the Defence Select Committee, warned that the Taliban had not changed. No fucking shit. They are the Taliban. They didn't decide to have a little bit of shake-up, you know. You know, this whole gig isn't really working. <laughs> you know, better, better change our image a little bit. Uh, we must get these interpreters out or they will be hunted and killed, he told MPs, and suggested using clandestine means to get them to safety if usual methods were unavailable. I agree, because we made an agreement with them. You help us, we help you. If we do not help them, then the message that we are sending out is if we are ever involved in any other type of armed conflict, the locals will not help us at all. And if even the locals will not help you, you are in for a very, very difficult war. Not that I'm pro-war anyway, but uh, all means will be explored, Mr Wallace replied. The email was sent by the team in charge of the UK's Afghan relocations and assistance policy, ARAP, Ah, uh, which has been in contact with them since the Taliban took control of the country last month. The team told the interpreters it was doing everything it could to help relocate them. It also said they should not put themselves or their families at risk if it was not safe for them to leave their current location. But one interpreter who received the email realised that more than 250 Afghans who worked with the British forces had been copied into the email. This mistake could cost the life of interpreters, especially for those who are still in Afghanistan, they told the BBC. Some of the interpreters didn't notice the mistake and they replied to all the emails already and... Oh God. And they explained their situation, which is very dangerous. The email contains their profile pictures and contact details. The MOD then sent another thirty sent another email 30 minutes later with the title Urgent ARAP Case Contact, asking the recipients to delete the previous email and warning your email address may have been compromised. Right, yeah, delete the previous email if you want. Like, it's out there. <laughs> it's out there. It's done. Any Taliban person that's, that's in that email list might, well, is going to go... Well, well, no, no, I don't think I will delete the email. Instead, I'm just going to do a little control A, a we control C, and a we control V, and ah, there we go, hopping, hopping the Hiluxes, boys. <laughs> we've, we've got a few doors to knock. Um, it recommended the interpreters change their email addresses. Yeah, fucking too late. Uh, Mr. Wallace said the Ministry of Defence believed there were 900 credible cases of a rap resettlement still in Afghanistan. Beyond the 311 the government is currently speaking to. Uh, Labour Shadow Defence Secretary John Healy welcomed the Defence Secretary's apology but told the Commons, the Commons that action now mattered most. Well, yeah. He told MPs these Afghan interpreters worked alongside our British forces and the government rightly pledged to protect them. Ministers must make good on those promises now. Yes, they absolutely should. After the BBC approached the Ministry of Defence, the Defence Secretary was angry enough to order an immediate inquiry. It's likely this data breach was just human error and the apology is certainly sincere, but there are obvious concerns if the email addresses, names and pictures fall into the wrong hands. They're probably already in the wrong hands. While the military evacuation on the ground was rightly lauded, the failure to get all those who worked with British forces out has left hundreds stranded and in hiding, rightly lauded. <laughs> uh, just, just this week, we spoke of, to the family of an eight-month-old British baby who is still stuck there, an interpreter who is on the run fearing for his life, and another interpreter who just does not know what to do. This data breach just compounds their safety concerns. I just... Oh, Afghanistan has just been one, uh, just a huge colossal fuck up. Right, now this is about a thousand people, and I know everyone's going like that. Ah, 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 mass immigration, mass immigration. Like, let's, let's be real. A thousand people's a fucking drop in the bucket, you know, compared to what the usual rate is. However, in this instance, these people put their lives at great risk to help us, and we made an agreement with them. Contracts should be honoured, right? They helped us. It's our turn to help them. 
okay obviously their help wasn't their help uh you know we lost we lost the war in afghanistan but hey ho that's what you get for trying to play the world police shouldn't have been there in the first place get fucked however we made an agreement with these people and we should help them because they helped us at great risk to themselves but you know if we can stop fucking up for five minutes you know maybe maybe they will you know stay alive long enough for us to actually bring them over here 